Hey guys, John Faulkner here with Survival Dispatch, and I got, as always, the Angry American. Angry American. It's so, uh, medical talk today, yeah. but it's not the typical metal t- medical talk that you usually hear. Yeah, that, that, that's, yeah this one's a little bit different in yeah. that, you know, we always talk about... IFAX. IFAX. And blowout kits, and multi-person Bailout, bags, yeah. and all kinds of stuff. All the, all the stuff that we would carry right. with us. Right. But what about the stuff that we need to have back at... And the house to resupply those kits should we use them. Yeah, and not even that, to continue aid to if ki- something I was going to say, or in a real bad situation, we bring somebody home yeah. who's critically injured and they need cared for. Yeah, and so, you know, we like I said, we talk about a lot of, you know, ankle rigs, pocket kits, IFAT kits like this yep. that we might carry to the range or keep in our bags mm-hmm. or keep in the console of our car. Uh, larger, multi-person, you know, IFAT kits like this, which we have a video on that Nikki will link yep. to. Um, but you know, these, these types of things are good in a rule of law situation where yeah. something has happened to Chris or to somebody, yep. we are rendering aid to keep him alive until we can get him to a medical facility exactly. for them to take care of it. Yes. Uh, so these are, these are at time and place of injury is what this correct. is for. Correct, correct. This is the aftercare yep. portion. Like you've got somebody home now. Like when I had my ACL replaced, two little incisions, I went through boxes and boxes and boxes of these things right here. Yeah. Now people look at these like, well, uh, I'd rather have my really trauma, trauma dressing. Yeah, well, you can buy a box of these for what one of those costs. One, yeah. Um, and this will do the same thing. It, it, you, you know, this, you can apply pressure with this and some rolled gauze. Yep. As you can see, in quantity, there's another box in quantity. I mean, you will need mountains of this stuff. You, yep. you just think someone slips with a chainsaw or an axe and has an accident, even if it's not like a real horrible one that's you know potentially life threatening yeah. they're still going to have a massive wound yep. that's going to need a lot of care that's going to need to be clean and irrigated every yep. day it's going to need packed. To packed it could Wrapped. be yeah packed clean dressings applied yep. to it so you need to have this stuff on hand you know even like and i know this is a bit of a stretch but i care i keep extra chest seals i have a lot of chest seals at home right um not because I think in a in the post grid down world I'm going to be using these all the time and saving right. people's lives because that's probably not going to happen. Um, but I, I do have them because I have kits and you know like today while we're filming this right now there was just an active shooter situation at the Pensacola Naval Air Station. Um, there were two people killed. There's 11 people in the hospital. Shooter's dead now as well. That's a mass casualty incident. Right. We live in that world. Right. And so I do prepare for the world we live in. So I carry this stuff. You know, big trauma dressings, things like that. Um, but yeah, like John said, this is for the moment of incident. This is the aftercare. Yeah. You get them home, you got to be able to take care of them. The alternative is, is going to be cutting up bed sheets and boiling them in pots. Right. Yeah. And, and, you know, and that's the biggest thing is, is you have to have the, the basic, the necessities, yes. the bare bones, um, to, to really keep that aid going because, um, you know, you talk about somebody takes a gunshot wound, if it doesn't hit an artery to the arm, if it's a through and through, yeah. uh, you know, it's something that extremely survivable. Oh, absolutely. Extremely. Happens, yeah. happens on With a, proper a, care. With proper care. But that man, you know, might, I was going to say man, might get shot, you know, through a bicep, doesn't do any damage, doesn't hit any bone, has no issue. If you don't keep it from getting infected, he's just as dead as if you never put a tourniquet on it to stop the bleeding. Exactly. And and so that's what this stuff is is all about, being able to continue that aid. And if you're talking about, we want to go back to, we're going to have a group of people. Mm-hmm. A group of people means more. <laughs> yeah, more, more, more. More and more medical preparedness. Yeah. Because, you know, like like we said, this is this is for that the very instant. The that's, moment of in- injury. That something happens. Yes. Um, and, and we can't get to the point in our preps, if we're talking about a community, where we save somebody because they were shot in the arm and we put a tourniquet on them, mm-hmm. but now they're going to die because we have nothing to do once we take that tourniquet off. And, or, or we can't take it or off because, yeah, we don't have the ability right. to care for them. And two, like in, in post-disaster uh, environments, one of the most common injuries, other than mechanical injuries, believe it or not, are burns. Burns. People having to cook over open fires, yep. living outdoors kind of at times, having burn dressings and the ability to care for burn dressings. Again, yep. if you can't get the you know the really high quality stuff like like this one, gauze and saline will do a fine job. Yeah, but you got to have it. You know, you've got to have this stuff. You know, mylar blankets for for treating shock and, and even hypothermia in cases, yep. sterile scalpels in case 
what if someone's got like a huge splinter embedded yeah. in them? You got to get it out. Yeah, it's going to suck, but having the and sterile materials to do these and things. And, and you matters. also need things like uh, non-stick surgical pads. Yes. Um, I can't remember. The ABD the, pads. Yes, yeah, ABD pads. Uh, you know, the, uh, the, uh, tef, the tef, tef, something. Teflon, tef. Uh, we'll uh, we can't remember. Up. We'll look it up. Um, but I, I have a bunch of them because if Chris cuts himself once again, that's going to start to scab and heal. Yep. Perfect. If you take just a regular roll of gauze, it's I wrap it on them. The next, you know, two hours later, I rip it. I rip off everything that was trying to grow yeah. back. That that healthy tissue, uh, tissue yep. that was trying to grow back. We put another one on. A couple hours later, yeah. I just rip it off again. That's why you have to have, you know, non-stick yeah. bandages and as like well. And like these, these are great because these are a non-stick. Um, never had them stick to me yep. ever. And two, one of the things to, to bear in mind is when you're doing the dress and changing is put some sterile saline on it, get it wet, it will come off easier. So one of the ways you can do this without like breaking the bank too is like Amazon, you know, we all love, hate Amazon. I know I do, I love, hate it. But you can subscribe to their subscribe and save. Yep. So you say, all right, every month I want a box, box of gauze and I want a box of these. Yep. You let that run for a few months and then you go in and you switch one of the items out. It's just a way to do this without seeing a big impact to your budget. Yeah. Or even, you know, every time you go to the grocery store, grab one or you're at Walmart, grab something yeah. and throw it in the cart and bring it home with you. If you see BOGO deals or something like that, it's a great way. It's a, yeah. Uh, and then let's also talk about informational yeah you libraries. know having having books on on medical stuff is a big deal now this is one of my favorites i happen to know joe and amy yep. the folks that wrote this great book. people um yeah doom and bloom survival so this is the survival medicine handbook yep. um these are two great people this is wrote in layman's terms yes. so that the average people can understand it like us um and they have not just your typical like ah, you need a hospital to do this they break it down on what you can do, kind of what the results are going to be, and they give you a lot of alternatives to herbal treatments and, and all kinds of alternative treatments. Um, this is a great book to have in your survival library. I highly recommend everybody get one. And, and um, there's little things that you'll come across. If somebody were to get a, like a boil or a cyst or something that got infected, you know, be able to cut, drain lance it, it, lance it, you drain, know, irrigate it. But things like that Clean can it. also be covered. It's not just gunshot wounds. Yeah, you know? yeah. This covers uh, all. This covers all kinds of stuff. You know, and it, two, one thing I would highly recommend. It depends on your group, but if you're a younger couple or a younger lady or you know you're a younger guy married and you're in the childbearing years, childbirth kits are not expensive. Right. They're fairly cheap to buy. They're not that complicated. You don't need a damn ER to deliver a baby. Believe it or not, it happens all the time in the jungles on and deserts all over the world. Um, but get one and put it away. Yeah, it could happen. You know, I would. You know, other things you might want to store too. Condoms, that kind of thing. Um, I was reading an article on it yesterday about that. Yeah. So, um, and the the nine month the hurricane baby syndrome that we mm -hmm. see here in Florida mm -hmm. all the time. That nine months after a hurricane, there's always a big spike in births real quick. Yep. Because people are bored. There's no entertainment. Yeah, they're gonna do what they do. Right. So, but again, prepare for that. You know, and and to the, the little people. If they get hurt, we know in the normal days they get hurt, scraped, banged, cut, yeah. you know. So so having the stuff to take care of them. And, you know, and having those things that are, that, you know, that we hope we never have to use. Airways, um, SAM splints, yeah. all that stuff. You can even get casting material yep. that you can have at home and just to set a bone. Um, so think about the medical stuff. And, and, and believe me, this is kind of like water and firewood. You can't have enough of it. Right. You know, you really can't have enough of it. It's... Number one, it makes an awesome barter item. Yes. Because in a grid down world, people are always getting hurt. Yep. And uh, even Selco said, it, this stuff was valuable. And it's one of those things too, not that, you know, uh, we're, we're trying to monopolize in a bad situation grid down, but if people are in need of medical supplies in a grid down situation, in a bartering situation, the value of it is immensely higher than, than what you paid for it because they are yes. in need of it. Yes. Yeah, and you know, like in Selco, for those of you who don't know, he's, he lived through the Balkan War. He was in a city cut off and surrounded for a year. Um, antibiotics, things like that, and, and, and bandaging. Even was, simpler things, Tylenol, ibuprofen. In the manual that Alan Kay and I are writing, I was just talking about our, our I call it pills and potions, you know, mm -hmm. pills, powders, and potions is what I call it, about having our little pharmacy. Yep. All that over-counter the stuff, over-the-counter stuff that we take for granted now, because yeah, there's a bottle of Tylenol rolling around in the truck, or you might have one in your purse, right. and there's this over here, there's some of that over there. We take it for granted because, well, if I can't find it, I can just hit the 7-Eleven or whatever and grab another yeah. one. Yeah. Well, when that doesn't exist, those Tylenol will be very valuable to you. Right. 
Because yeah, you can't get Goody's headache powder at yeah, the gas station. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. So, you know, the Ali's, the Tylons, you know, get that stuff and store it, rotate it, you know. You can hit Costco, Sam's, BJ's, whatever flavor you prefer of those and buy them in the bigger bottles uh, and, and keep them on hand because you never know when, what day will be the last day that you could have went to the store. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, in this video, uh, we know it's not the funnest of topics, but you know, Chris and I always try to do videos on where we see on a common basis, you yeah. know, holes in people's preparations. Yes. And and this is one of those overlooked areas. And this is one that bothers me a lot because it's not expensive to it's do. It's not. I mean, yeah. I mean, this IFAT kit costs more than Oh, all everything the stuff on this table. On the table. I mean, this this right here or maybe maybe this H and H chest seal kit is probably the most expensive thing right. laying up here. Um, the rest of this stuff is fairly cheap. This gauze right here is just one bag of 10 bags, I think I ordered off of Amazon that came in a box all together. Mm -hmm. 10 bags of them, mm -hmm. like this. And there's, what is there? There's 10 rolls in a bag, so yep. 100 rolls of gauze. Um, or, you know, in, in here too, like a little officer patrol kit. Yep, you know, pocket kit. Has the SWAT tourniquet in it. Again, this is something you could throw to somebody if they needed it. But most folks do not stock enough bandaging materials, Band-Aids gauze, pads, packing material, yeah. and two, most people don't understand that you need to pack some big wounds. Um, that's where books, again, knowledge, like John was just talking about, comes into play. Um, medical stuff is tricky, but also not tricky. Some of it's kind of common sense. And we just have to work with what we have. You know, we'll be back to, depending on the level of severity, we could be back to 1800 level medicine. Mm -hmm. And and people always talk about that and they they, they lament the lack of knowledge those surgeons had and the doctors. Yeah, right. they would use the same instruments on one guy after the next, the yeah. next, the next. They didn't understand disease vector and that sort of thing. But those guys did know how to remove a limb. They knew how to tie off an artery, how to remove a limb, how to close that wound. And guys lived. They yeah. lived. I don't know how to do that. You know how to do that? No. You know how to cut somebody's leg off? No. With no anesthesia? And we if, could try. And if, <laughs> Nikki. Yeah. Come on. Right, let me get a scalpel. <laughs> uh, but imagine it's a family member yeah. or it's your child that this is happening to. And you don't even have the bandaging material to try to take care of them. Right. So let's not even get into taking the limb off, but you don't even have the materials. You know, you're going to wrap them in sheets and old towels and stuff. Spend a little bit of money, add it to the grocery list, pick something up every time you go to the store. You can do the copy canning thing too. Yep. Every time you go, just grab one box, one piece of something and put it away in that closet of your supplies. You can yeah. see there's multiple brands here. I mean, yeah. this is from CVS, Amazon. I think these might have come from Target or something. I don't even remember. And then online orders. A lot of this is Amazon stuff. Um, you know, but but start building that that uh, inventory yeah. of medical supplies. Because again, you will be shocked at how much of the stuff it takes to treat one. I agree. So if you guys got any other questions or comments with regards to this topic, feel free to leave them below. We're always around for the next couple of days. Um, also, you know, make sure you check out our Survival Dispatch Insider. We have quite a few issues. You can check it out for free for 14 days. Just click the link below. Uh, and we have a lot of different issues on medical related uh, parts. So, you know, if there's information you're looking for, make sure you check that out as well. We appreciate each and every one of you guys watching today. Make sure you hit that like button. It really helps us out. And until next time, be safe. <laughs>